Hi, my name is Jay Locker Carpenter, and this is a brief tutorial on composition. Simply put, composition refers to the individual components that together form a whole. Uh, within art specifically, this is the placement of objects or figures in relation to each other within a scene. Using examples of my own work, I'll emphasize the specifics of what makes each a unique stylistic device within itself. As an initial introduction, this is in regards to the history of Western art. I do know other cultures employ their own techniques, though in my understanding a commonality amongst each is quite often theology. Religious orders within Europe were centers of power, and as great patrons of the arts, utilize art as a communicative tool. This is essentially one of the main driving forces behind the development of composition within Western art, and especially within a society that was predominantly illiterate, art was a powerful means to propagate these ideas thereby further exerting power and control. In order to keep this tutorial concise, I've chosen two diverse periods within art history. The first being Classicism, the other the Baroque. Specifically, there are stylistic devices unique to the latter of the two periods, which I employ within my own work. And to this end, I'll be detailing these further within this tutorial. Very quickly, Classicism is based on the preservation and revival of the ideals unique to antiquity, or ancient history. In Europe, you think of Greco-Roman or Hellenistic cultures. The Mediterranean countries, uh, essentially Italy or Greece and Southern Europe. Obviously, this period encompasses more, but geographically speaking, it's relevant to this tutorial. The period itself is quite broad in scope, but arguably the greatest revival of these principles was during the Renaissance. The second period is the Baroque. This is by far one of my favourite periods in art history. It's an artistic style defined by grandiosity, motion and drama. Um, though the works themselves are quite vast, uh, they're very intricate in terms of detail and it breaks from the conformity of classicism, essentially through its exaggerated lines and compositions. This style was the Catholic Church's response to the Protestants through the Counter-Reformation. Essentially, classicism employs symmetry and order throughout, whilst the Baroque, conversely, is asymmetrical and quite chaotic. I've chosen six recent paintings of mine, essentially to highlight these stylistic devices in use. Beginning with classicism, I've chosen these two paintings. The first is called The Calm, and comparatively, you want to elicit harmony, balance and order within the composition. The equilateral triangle in particular is quite prevalent amongst the Renaissance artists and its meaning is multifaceted. Its geometric importance is relative to perspective, whereby two points converge at a third to create depth. This use of perspective within art was advanced significantly during the Renaissance period and therefore is of particular importance. Its symbolism is one of hierarchy. Within Roman Catholicism this is often the Holy Trinity. In this painting, the triangle points upwards and represents stability through the, the horizontal line at the bottom of the painting, essentially creating a grounding or um, a foundation, if you will, and pointing up towards what is essentially the point of dominance within the triangular composition. If I were to turn the triangle upside down, the opposite would be true, whereby you'd elicit feelings of loss of control. Uh, you see this quite frequently within Renaissance art, whereby figures fall from grace or into hell. Classicism is a category of composition based on artistic style. In terms of its content or subject matter, this particular work would be an example of history painting, which is in and of itself another genre. Um, if you guys actually want to know more about specific uh, genres within uh, art history, then I can create future videos in regards to that. Okay, so this painting is more allegorical in comparison to the previous piece, but compositionally it still meets the requirements of classicism. So you have this idea of symmetry and replication on either side. Um, the, if you were to divide the, the painting uh, within the straight down the middle, essentially, you have uh, a balance. So you have um, motifs or images on one side that are, again, replicated on the other. Um, sort of like a, a yin to yang mentality towards this particular painting's composition. I have actually, however, s taken this a little step further than the previous work in that I created uh, an ellipse uh, towards the bottom left of the painting. Uh, this essentially is sort of like a cradle akin to a fetus within the womb. So uh, the woman on the left is represented in a childlike state within this ellipse. Again, it sort of denotes innocence or purity, a rebirth of sorts, which again is in line with the egg shape. 
this is comparable to surrealism. You can see this uh, biological ellipse within Salvador Dali's work of Geopoliticus Child or The Metamorphosis of Narcissus. Uh, Dali was an artist who drew quite heavily on uh, the Renaissance. His inspiration was at least within that period within art history. You can see uh, a lot of influences from uh, Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael and Michelangelo. Uh, so quite predominantly within the higher Renaissance period within art history. In stark contrast, this work is a lot more intimate in that through perspective foreshortening and diagonal planes you feel as though you are directly a witness within the scene. This and the chaotic arrangement is essentially the Baroque period of art. Again within this piece you feel a sense of unease and drama within the chaos and motion of the composition and content itself. This style of art places you, uh, the viewer, as an active participant within the scene. Um, within the Baroque there are two stylistic devices that I use quite often within my work and taking this painting for example I make use of the technique known as repissoir. Essentially it's the bracketing or framing of the image by means of an object or figure within the right or left of the foreground. Um, Sir Peter Paul Rubens was known particularly for this technique. Uh, Peter Paul Rubens was a Flemish painter um, of the Northern European artist tradition, uh, again within the Baroque period within art history. This device is employed by the artist as a means of containing the viewer's attention and um, through the repissoir on the, the frames of the image, it draws the viewer's attention inwards. The other stylistic device in use you can see within this particular work is chiaroscuro, which is uh, the Italian for light to dark. It's recognizable through its strong contrast between the two. The work is predominantly dark, save for a pillar of light which inexplicably illuminates the scene. The light is often thought of as divine, at least within Roman Catholicism, um, and Caravaggio is well known for this technique, particularly in Tenebroso, uh, a pronounced and dramatic version of the style. Um, within Tenebroso, Caravaggio, he uses uh, again this sort of uh, stark contrast between two extremes. Markedly different from the idealistic depictions of divinity in mythology and classicism, uh, Chiaroscuro applies uh, similar themes through an accurate modeling or rendering technique, essentially reimagining the extraordinary as uh, the everyday. The figurative representation elicits a degree of believability for themes of fantasy. Again, this is a brief introduction into composition. Um, there are other fundamentals that I will uh, delve further into in future videos, but this is literally uh, just to encapsulate some of the techniques you could employ within your own work uh, to create a more appealing image by the end. You probably are actually, to an extent, already using these techniques, and if so, it's simply a reminder. Okay, so thanks for listening. If there are any topics you guys want me to cover in the future, uh, send me a message and I'll get on it. Okay, uh, thanks again, guys. All the best.